Joining me right now on Kumite TV is one championship Adam Wake contender, May Yamaguchi. Welcome back on the show, May. Hi, everyone. Let's start off first uh, about the withdrawal. You know, Bo Meng, she withdrew from the fight last February with only uh -huh. about a week or so from the event. Was there some frustration since you went through a whole training camp for that fight? Um, well, I was surprised, but, um, no, it was okay because, uh, one championship told me that my card was slided to Tokyo event, and that's the one I really wanted to fight in, so it was okay, plus, um, I did fly out to Singapore, and, um, I stayed there for a week, and I got chance to train at Evolve, um, really good training with the uh, coaches, so it was okay. When you were at Evolve, oh, was that your cat? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get my camera. All right. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, okay. It's okay. When you were at uh, Evolve, uh -huh. was there anything in particular that you, you wanted to work on with the coaches? Yeah, especially the um, cage wrestling and um, all the boxing mix mixing into the MMA moves. So that that's what I worked on. One championship, you know, they told you you were go you were gonna be on the you know the Japan card. It all worked out for you in the end. Uh, one month later, you went there. What were the emotions like during fight week? Uh, it was it was exciting, you know. It's like my dream come true, and um, it is amazing. We all the fighters I know and one championship staff was in Tokyo, my hometown. It was kind of weird feeling because I always meet there in foreign countries, and now they're all in Tokyo. So it was fun. Was there any? underlying nervousness because you hadn't fought in Japan since 2015. Um, actually, if I say there was uh, nothing that's, that's, that's going to be a lie, but um, even I feel a little nerve, I try to like take it um, in a good way and try to get comfortable um i didn't try to think about it too much so i try to focus on what i need to do in the cage and um you know the the event was just like the way they do in foreign country so i didn't feel like i'm in japan that much so i think that was good you know i was i was able to do what i always do in one championship how did you prevent yourself from overtraining, you know, with such a long training camp? Um, when I flew out to Singapore, I took a little bit a day off and just had fun. I, I did go to Evolve and train, but um, especially the MMA head coach, Ed, Eduardo, he told me that um, don't don't go too hard you need I need to rest a little bit and um, yeah he told me I should um, well training I will train but you know just take it easy and when I go went back to Japan I should start camp again so that was his um, sorry my cat is <laughs> Using my camera, oh my god, they're fighting under my camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that was um, Ed Eduardo told me. So I try to uh, put that in my mind, and um, yeah, I took a good, good um, vacation mm -hmm. in Singapore. So that's how I control myself. You went in there, you faced Lakova, submitted her in the third round. Mm -hmm. It didn't come easy. What did you think about the performance you had? Um, she she was pretty strong. Her physical was really good. Um, 
it was stronger than I expected. So uh, I was kind of surprised, but um, I think it's from all my experience and I didn't, um, I just try to stay focused don't uh, rush too much so uh, it it was hard to take her down but I didn't rush too much I try to um, control myself um, and just waited for the chance I can take her down in the middle of the cage so um, that's what happened in third round what kind of adjustments did you have to make to close the gap you know to get her down in the third round um, actually, um, I think in both first and second round, I was able to take her down, but I couldn't pass the guard, but, um, I was able to throw a little bit of ground and punches, especially into her stomach. So I think, um, Lechkova got a little bit tired from that. So her speed was, uh, not like her in first round. So that's... Uh, that's the one thing I was able to take her down in third round, and um, uh, I I think I was trying to take her down on the cage too much in earlier rounds, so I just changed that and try to take her down in middle of the cage. So that was good change. Later that night, Jinang she successfully defended her title in the fifth round with the TKO over Angela yeah. Lee. I'm pretty sure you were cage side watching this fight. Were you cage side? Yeah, I was watching. What did you think of how that fight played out? Did you expect it to be like that? Um, I thought Angela Lee will take Jinan down in early, earlier rounds, but she was trying uh, a lot on her feet. So that was kind of surprising. But um, I think Jinan was better in defending all her submissions so um it was it was great you know and uh Jinan never gave up so uh that was that was very very nice good good fight the fourth round the arm bar i think it was the arm bar submission she got out of that so it was deep did you yeah. were you surprised that she was able to get out of it because it looked like the arm bent in the wrong way. It it looked, but um, I know it's it's just her mental mental thing, you know. And plus, especially for a woman, you know, <laughs> you hear the sound. Oh my god! Oh my god! Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like for. For girls, we have like uh, flexible joints, and like me, I don't have like super flexible arm, but still, I don't think I will tap. So I think it it's same thing for Jinan, and um, like for me, it's it's a lot of risk to go for armbar because I know a lot of girls never tap for that, and um, yeah, I did. I was kind of scared to go for the on bar against Lechkova too, but um, luckily she tapped, so I got submission. But um, yeah, well, it for um, I thought you know I was in a big trouble in that fourth round, but um, yeah, she she never tapped, you know. But it it was amazing because. Um, I think it was in like a uh, what triangle position kind of. So even she got out of that arm bar, maybe she I was uh, scared. Maybe she will get into the chokes or something. So um, yeah, it's it it's, it's amazing she got out of that deep deep arm bar. Is Angela Lee, have you heard anything about the Adam Weight title? Is she going back down to defend it or is she staying at that weight class? Uh, I'm not sure, but what I've heard is that she's 
having a really hard time going down to atom weight, cutting weight and stuff. So I, I have no idea what she's going to do. Well, after that event, you got another vacation. You went to Phuket uh -huh. for the yeah, one retreat. And a lot of people think that that's just a little trip for the the fighters and the employees to have fun but really you got to learn a lot of things down there what did what did you do uh we had like um how to use the sns effectively and um how do we like show ourselves as professional to to get the sponsorship and stuff so um uh, it's all about how do we advertise ourselves as professional fighters. Wow, that's interesting, you know, that One Championship is doing that for the fighters because I don't think any other company is doing that or any other fight promotion. Yeah, it's a um, really good, great opportunity for the fighters. You know, even I try to, like, post a lot of pictures and video and stuff, but I still have a lot of things that I'm not, I'm not doing, you know. Mm -hmm and i get to notice know about that and um and we also did like a little shopping for uh to get the one championship gears t-shirts and all those stuff and um they made a custom suit for us so we can wear it for the uh like face off and all those so wow yeah <laughs> that's nice yeah it's nice for a fighter because we all have like weird body shape you know <laughs> like big thighs but you know small wrist waist and you know it's the size is not a bit different from normal so it's it's great to have those kind of customized stuff now you're rebooked to take on Bo Meng in Singapore, same location. Did you want to be rebooked to fight her? Or did you want, or did you expect, you know, another name in the division? Well, if I can fight in Singapore, it didn't matter what, it, um, who I will fight. But it, it was a um, good opportunity to fight against Mimbo because she's, really aggressive and um, strong and physical too. She has a good record you know, record, and she has a lot of experience fighting in China. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a really good opportunity. Yeah, it seems like One Championship is bringing in a lot of the top level Chinese fighters and you, you yeah. get the opportunity to fight one of them. Is that yeah. important for you to take on the best of the best in a country? Yeah, I think so. Um, in the, yeah, the level of Chinese Chinese fighter, they're growing so fast, and I know there's so many good fighters fighting in other organizations. Um, they're they're really strong. They're really good. So um, if I want to challenge the atom weight belt again, I need to win against those tough fighters. So it's good. Has your approach changed in preparing for her since this is the second training camp for this fight? Yeah, I think um, like Lachkova is a was a striker, but she her style is a bit different from Mimbo. So um, and it it was good that I I can I was um, in Japan. In Tokyo event, it is good preparation to see how I can go against the striker. So um, I learned that what I need to do more to fight against Menbo, and what I need to change more uh, comparing to the last time I prepared for Menbo. You know, um, and I saw her in Phuket too. So. She, she looked pretty buff and <laughs> strong, so um, yeah, it's like, okay, I need to get ready to fight her. Yeah. It seems like you want to stay as active as possible. What is motivating you to fight so much, other than your cats and wanting that Adam Waite title? Um, it 
know, I've, I've been fighting for a long, long time. And there was some uh, moment that I couldn't fight or there was no card for a woman. And, um, you know, I had those tough time. But right now it's totally different. We have a lot of chance to fight in so many big events. So um, that's just great. If I think about all the days I've been preparing for these good things, uh, I just don't want to stop. And, you know, I need to relax sometimes. But, you know, if I can be active as much uh, as possible, I just want to keep going do you see yourself evolving more and more every day you know in different parts of your game other than you know your strong aspects yes um i've been training a lot of strikings and um i'm pretty comfortable on the ground but if i wanted to go for the ground games i need to be more uh it, more active on the standings in the boxing. So I'm trying to put all those together and I think it is improving every day and it's it's kind of fun. So yeah, I'm learning a lot. One last thing before I let you go. This kind of doesn't really have to do anything with fighting, but I was wondering like when you're when you have your earphones in, you know, when you're listening to music, like what kind of music are you listening to? Because you know, I know you've lived in the states and you've you've been all around the world, and now you've been living yeah. in Japan for so long. You must have been exposed to so much different types of uh, artists. Can you tell me? Can you uh, can you recommend any artists? Oh, recommend um, the Japanese rock band One OK Rock. It's a they have really good, cool music, so I, I listen to them a lot. But um, I don't know. I have I have so many um, like I don't have like particular music genre that I love. So I like anything. I like um, like uh, relaxing music, maybe ukulele or Japanese traditional songs. I like everything, but um, sometimes I like to listen to the uh, rain sounds. You know what I mean? Like uh, like Enya? Forest. Are you talking about Enya, the group? Oh, that... yeah, yeah. Enya is good too, but uh, more like natural oh. uh, forest sounds. Waterfalls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I really like it. When I get on subway, it's it's kind of noisy, so I just turn on those kind of forests, and I feel like, oh, I'm in forest. <laughs> it's relaxing. All right, well, May 17th, Singapore, one entered the dragon. Thank you so much, May, for your time. I always appreciate you for coming on the show, and uh, we'll talk soon again. Good luck to you. Okay, thank you.